What did you learn about the opposite sex a little late in life? Not all men want physical intimacy all the time. When I was young my mom would tell me that men only want one thing. Everyone from my relatives to pop culture seemed to agree that men wanted physical intimacy 100% of the time. Which led me to have some foolish insecurities when I was dating someone and they weren't in the mood. Because if men want physical intimacy all the time and he didn't want physical intimacy right now then it must just be me right. It took me a long time to learn that men can be not in the mood and it has nothing to do with me. I kid you not. My uncle actually believed women never passed gas. Not until he was almost 40 years old. Married my aunt. Dad's younger sister. And she proceeded to rip the loudest one under the covers he had ever heard. Apparently the women on his side of the family refused to acknowledge that women fart and a few of them have said it in front of me. Balls involuntarily move all the time. The skin ripples. It is prominent when going from one climate to another. Such as getting out of the shower and drying off. I do that sometimes in the bath. Let the balls hang over water. Let them move on their own accord. When they slow down. Splash hot water and then they move around as if trying to move away from my body to lose heat. Then BAMMM cold water, and they shoot up close to my body. <laughs> Women don't have blue fluid leaking from their body. I was like 13 when I learned that Maxipad commercials pour blue fluid on them to show their absorbance because blood would be in bad taste. It's actually an artistic reference. Picasso had a blue period, you see. May not be all women but you'll have period panties. Why would I risk staining more than necessary? Why would I throw out perfectly functional but stained ones? That guys had pubic hair on their balls. I thought they just had the bush and that's it. Twats vary in size just as much as dongs do. It's not my fault I have a wide set T. That white women can have brown nipples. Guys with vasectomies still ejaculate. I don't know what made me think this, but I assumed nothing came out when they orgasm after the procedure. Probably jokes like they took the venom out of the cobra. The semen is made up of three liquids. One from the balls, one from the prostate, one from the seminal vesicles. You can still ejaculate without one organ. I lived a very sheltered life until I was about 16. Some of the seniors in my sophomore math class were talking about donating sperm. I assumed they had some sort of slang word for peeing in a cup and I asked where could I go and get paid to pee in a cup? Today I learned sophomores donate sperm. Men can like, move their dongs? More like a bobbing motion but what the frick. That guys can flex their dongs. Now I make my boyfriend do it because it just blows my mind. For a fun experiment, start hanging some items on it and see how much weight he can lift. That towel turban actually has their hair twisted up in it colon. I was a young boy, I kicked my older sister in the crotch, found out that girls don't have the male genitalia. That's my purse, I don't know you. I felt guilty for playing with their tea during physical intimacy I assumed they got no pleasure out of it. It turns out they, usually, love it too. If ya know what you're doing go for them titties. Don't anime grope them though. Up until I was at least 14 I thought there was a third hole in between the T and the butthole where you were supposed to put your dong. There are three holes so you were kind of right. From the ages of 14 to 25, I thought that guys just hung out and watched pee together on the couch. Like dudes being dudes, giving each other high fives and crap. Ain't no way I'm letting my friends know my pee preference. That's so much roast material. Guys have hairy butts. I read about it online and hand waved it as just something a few haven't liked to complain about, but my ex also had a hairy butt, so I guess it's not that rare? Guys have hairy everything. The bit under the head of the dong is called a frenulum and it's a good place to put a celeb. I discovered this when some friends were talking about it and I had an image of them holding a Hitachi under their tongue. The T is not on the front like the dong. I was shocked how up under there it is. I used to think girls peed out of the twats. Rip high school health class not helpful at all. This made me laugh. I thought girls peed out of their butts until I was 14. Then, when I was on a ski trip with friends, 
They made fun of me and called me an idiot and told me that girls peed out of their twats. Then, at the ripe age of 25, my sister who is a health professional informed me that no, girls do not pee out of their twats. When you find a girl you like, just freaking tell them. As soon as I learned they don't know unless you tell them I was away. Been into this girl for over 5 years. Not said a word. Probably should. Definitely should. Hasn't happened. I was in a life drawing class when I was 18 and most of us were 18 year old girls. It was cold that morning so the nude model's dong looked really small and I think most of us didn't know dongs could grow because there was giggling. I'm sorry Tim, we know your dong isn't always small now. Life drawing models can be unusual. One that stands out was a girl that started crying halfway through her pose. Not sobbing, but tears rolling down her face. 18 year old me was not sure how to process the naked woman crying in front of our class. That menopause thing. I thought it was something that happened kind of suddenly, and was over within a few weeks. Uh, no, you younger guys out there, get ready. Women's farts can travel from their buttholes and get caught in their twats. That was a secret to me for nearly 25 years as a man. I know now. Ladies forgive me for questioning the validity of Mr. Panty Sniffing Ninja's statement, but I'd love a second opinion. One night while getting ready for bed my husband had to blow his nose. Now, he gets terrible hay fever. He also sleeps naked. I was already in bed waiting for him to get into bed for some pre-snooze snuggles. That was the night I learned that when men blow their noses, their testicles contract. I haven't laughed that hard in ages. That men often rely on their female SOS as their sole source of emotional support and open communication. This led to a lot of confusing situations for me when guys didn't really want to be in a relationship with me, but they couldn't do without the emotional companionship it provided for them. So I often ended up getting what felt like very mixed signals. It took me a long time to learn that mixed signals almost always means I should leave. I thought dongs got slimy and slippery when men were about to have physical intimacy. I have no idea where I got this idea, to be honest. When I was 16 and was fumbling through my first hand blow job, I remarked on how soft skinned and dry his dong was. Slurp slurp. Yojo. That's a dry butt dong. I had always assumed that tampons pads were strictly for leakage. I thought females had a sphincter like muscle to hold in their periods, but blood stained so badly that women use tampons and pads as an added layer of security. I assumed women would go to bathrooms and push out all their menstruation nasty. I wish I could just push it all out in 30 seconds and be done for the month. I have had mostly male friends in my life so naturally most of the nights of heavy drinking have been predominantly with men. But the other night I got drunk and was with mostly women and lem say, the way drunk women gas each other up is the greatest thing. Just raining compliments on each other non-stop. How kind and trustworthy she is. How great her outfit is today and every day. How proud we are of her new job, etc etc. Getting myself caught in the crossfire and being on the receiving end of that unrelenting love, especially while plastered, was something I have never experienced with my guy friends. Also made me realize how good it feels to let your friends know how great they are. Like why don't I do that more often? The jokes about drunk girls in the bathroom being your best friends are absolutely true. I have never felt love like I did while puking in a bar toilet and suddenly have 5 strangers rubbing my back and asking me if I was okay and telling me I still looked hot. I'd die for those girls on a battlefield. They do not pee from their clit. I was 15 when I found out a woman's tea is not just a few inches below the belly button. In movies the missionary position made it seem to me like a guy entering a woman was directly down from a push up position. When I had physical intimacy for the first time with my now wife I was pushing my dong against her mons pubis wondering why it wouldn't go in. That they're just people. Girls have to get wet to enjoy physical intimacy. God damn it you liar. Now my wife is pee off that I sprayed her with the kitchen faucet sprayer. I didn't realize that a dong can change sizes without an erection just by how a man is standing, sitting, or laying down. I used to think my boyfriend always had like a half chub when he was standing up versus when he is laying down on the bed. Till that people vary significantly as to what constitutes a little late in life. 
a girl I used to know thought, well into her 20s, that the semen of African American males was colored black. You know like when you grab a woman's breast and it's, your, you feel it and it feels like a bag of sand? It's even worse when you squeeze too hard and actual sand comes out. Men do not need the stuff that happens in pee in order to enjoy physical intimacy, and I don't either. It took forever for me to realize is that changing positions, speed, angle, etc all the time is not needed, or even wanted. You find the place, time and speed at which it works for you both and you repeat it. Men will be over the moon if you show enthusiasm during physical intimacy and will be more than happy to repeat the same motion for more than 60 seconds if it gets the woman there with to cm. Except I didn't know this. My exp was based entirely on p where weird position. Quick changes and alternations I used simply for the visual. Physical intimacy became a lot better once I figured that out and was no longer afraid to ask for what I need. No one told me that when you take your physical to go into middle school that you had to show the doctor your balls. They told my sister to step out of the room and there I was alone with a nurse and my mom and they just said that I know what to do. Um no I didn't so I just stood there like an idiot for about 2 minutes and they said they'd type declined into their system for me I didn't know what that was all about until my mom told me on our way back home. People, always use words with your son. Wait I just realized this is not regarding the opposite sex but whatever I'm not deleting this. Many people are so incredulous. It's like they didn't even have dong inspection day. The tea does not simply suck up the load like a sponge. I thought it just magically disappeared in there. Was 16 my first time when I realized. You were ahead of the curve. Most 16 year olds aren't dumb enough to finish inside. I am 29 and married. I had no idea that when bulls move up when they cold just the testicle went up and it goes like into their abdomen. And he can push it back down. That women pee out of a different hole. That was a weird bar moment for me that night. That if you have a pretty gf, she is going to get hit on. A lot. And guess what? She does not want to sleep with them. She is used to it, and at least my gf very quickly says something to work my existence into the convo if it heads anywhere near the guy showing interest beyond conversation. And to add to that, all girls are not cheating tramps. Don't let one from your youthful years ruin a good thing because of trust. It never really bothered me when a girl I was with got hit on. The way I see it, if she really likes being with me, she'll turn the guy down. If she leaves me for that guy, she was going to leave at some point anyway. Just gotta cut your losses and move on. I understood most things about females after being around them for most of my life. My mother was young when she had me, so her friends had no problem whatsoever explaining physical intimacy, the menstrual cycle, and habits to a 5 year old in terms that I could understand. What I didn't know for a very long time after, though, is that vulvas can vary greatly in appearance from woman to woman. I honestly thought, until I was 16, that the labia grew entirely dependent upon how much physical intimacy a woman had. Like some sort of physical curse for enjoying a natural process. I'm in the US. But I was honestly graced with a series of really good adult ed teachers in school. They didn't split the class. Didn't do the abstinence speeches. Didn't shy away from the gritty details of being a male or a female. And didn't shield us from the LBGT side of physical intimacy. In high school. Instead of saying don't have physical intimacy, they told us that it's our decision, that consent was incredibly important, that P wasn't realistic physical intimacy, and that we should protect ourselves and our partners. But since it's technically illegal to show detailed real life versions of genitalia to minors in a school setting, and since all of the depictions of genital organs for both genders were basically all the same in all of the books, I never really considered that some vuvi could be different, and that they all formed into the same general shape. Even the pee I watched in my youth had very little degrees of differences. You have been visited by the money bird. It'll bring you good fortune, but only if you subscribe in 42 seconds or less. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check out another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.